Welcome everyone to MTG Deck Masters. In today's video, we're gonna look at the top five cards that completely fell off the map in modern. And by completely fell off the map, I don't mean you don't see them anymore, not at all in the modern format. I'm speaking cards that were dominating the modern format that nowadays are pretty rare to actually find being played in some decks and in some cases are just fringe cards. So the number five card I want to talk about is Liliana of the Veil. And I know this is not a card that fell off completely in the modern format, but this used to be, along with Jace the Mind Sculptor, like the best Planeswalker in modern, uh, especially before Jace got unbanned. It's one generic black-black uh, for a three loyalty Planeswalker. Plus one, each player discards a card, minus two target player sacrifices a creature, and minus six, separate all permanents target player controls into two piles. That player sacrifices all permanents in the pile of his or her choice. So this was played in Jund, um, Abzan, Midrange, uh, Green Black Rock. But nowadays in Modern, these fair Green Black X Midrange deck decks just cannot keep up with all the new cards in Modern Horizons and Modern Horizons 2 because if the opponent puts a red and six into play, there's not much they can do. Uh, and it's only a two mana card. And same thing with all the new elementals. It's really hard to beat a uh, Solitude or a Fury in your creature-based fair deck. So you could still find it in Ragdos Midrange and Modern, but as you see, all the top decks that are playing Liliana the Veil are either Standard or Pioneer, because now it's become Pioneer legal. But if we uh, select Modern only, let's see which decks play it. You see, there's Ragdos Midrange and Jund, which are not even that popular. Uh, Jund is not that popular, but Ragdos quite popular. But when you go on Ragdos, it's played like as a one-of, <laughs> sometimes in the main deck, and sometimes just one-of in the sideboard. Uh, Jun still plays it, but not even as a four-of, it's like a two or three-of most of the time. And then you have very fringe decks, like eight rack and mono black coffers, or some the rock Ragdos mid-range, small pox, Mardu mid-range. So yeah, Lillian the Veil is mostly a fringe card nowadays in modern, which is crazy to see. At number four, I have Cryptic Command. And uh, this is a card that was also a modern staple because it was played in Splinter Twin, but then Twin got banned. And it was played in simply all the control decks. It was a must-have all control decks, must-have four copies of Cryptic Command. The deck was based around that. The combo was Cryptic Command and Snapcaster Mage, and you would just loop your Cryptic Commands to tap your opponent's creatures. And then you would um, counter their spell or draw cards, whatever. It was kind of your top-end card that would really kind of lock the opponent out of the game and generate you a lot of value. But nowadays, with cards like Mystical Dispute, or Subtlety, or Force of Negation, Cryptic Command is not that great. Also, the format has become faster, and spells have become cheaper, so Cryptic Command is really not that efficient at countering a um, <laughs> Dragon's Rage Chandler, or a Ragavan, or a Ren and Six. It's just way too slow. And even when you get into the late game and the opponent is casting spells like Murktide Regent or Omnath, Cryptic Command is mana neutral at best, 95% uh, of the time. So yeah, you can see it's basically not played at all. The only reason why it has kept some value is due to Commander play. Um, if it were not for Commander, this card would be 2 bucks. Uh, you can find it in Jeskai Control, uh, some lists of Azorius Control, but... Um, just uh, the most fringe control list. Uh, the real good control decks, uh, Azorius control decks, do not play Cryptic Command at all. And then you have it in Crashing Footfalls. I guess it's like a one of in the sideboard. So yeah, Cryptic Command completely gone in modern. Uh, it's it's just because the format has become uh, much better over time and much more efficient. And having a four mana counter spell is just way too much. And Archmage's Charm has replaced it in most decks. Number three is Sword of the Meek, and just look at the price chart on this bad boy. Now it's three bucks, and it used to be almost 30 bucks at Throne of Eldraine. So why did it go up in the first place? Uh, it's because it got unbanned around War of the Spark, so it went up to like 15 bucks, and then it went up to like 20 bucks, because people were trying to figure out if it was even good in Modern. But then Urza got printed in Modern Horizons, which made Sword of the Meek good, because the combo of Top Your Sword and... Um, well, not Th Thopter Sword. Uh, Thopter Foundry and Sword of the Meek, which is uh, Thopter Foundry is an artifact, can pay one, sacrifice an artifact, and make a 1-1 one, one Thopter. 
and uh, gain one life. So you would sacrifice the Sword of the Meek, make a 1-1, one, one, bring back Sword of the Meek. Sacrifice Sword of the Meek, make a 1-1, one, one, bring back Sword of the Meek, and you could do that infinitely. The issue was, you needed to pay 1 mana every single time. So you had an infinite combo, but you did not have infinite mana. So it was a very slow burn combo uh, that <laughs> won the game over like 3 or 4 turns. So it was not that great against fast decks. Uh, there are not aggro decks because obviously winning life and putting a bunch of small creatures in play is great against burn decks or aggressive decks. But against Storm, not so much. Uh, but uh, back then, it was a good way to uh, win the game. But uh, in 2019, not, not that much. But when Urza got printed in Modern Horizons, it allowed this combo to become infinite instantly. So we had infinite life and infinite topters. And all of them could tap for blue mana. So you could leave up counter spells on the opponent's turn. Or even activate Urza an infinite amount of times to find a combo piece that would win the game instantly, like a time sieve. Uh, so that's why the deck got so good uh, with Urza. But then Moxopole got banned. And the deck completely fell off the map in Modern and nobody was playing it. So the card has just been tanking in value ever since and hasn't gone up uh, even once. So uh, yeah, this, this card is no longer played in Modern. It's played some fringe top tier combo decks. But without Mox Opal, it's really hard. Uh, also, Oops, All Spells and Jeskai Stoneblade, uh, I guess. Like, uh, I guess you could play your Sword of the Meek if you want to, but this is not a modern card anymore. It's a commander card. At number two, we have Snapcaster Mage, another card I talked about. And just look at this. 27 bucks for a Snapcaster Mage in near mint condition. Uh, this card was so expensive for the longest time. It was always at least 50 bucks. Uh, just it went down uh, around this time because modern was not that uh, popular due to events closing down but then it went up again uh, when modern became popular again but ever since modern horizons 2 this card completely left modern it's like it has completely disappeared because it's not synergistic with murktide regent it's not synergistic with delirium uh, nowadays people would much rather play dragon's race chandler with mrs bobble and um um What's the name of that card again? Um, Murktide Regent. And also Unholy Heat as a removal spell. But the problem is when you have a card that exiles an instant and sorcery from your graveyard, it's not that good when you have tons of Delirium cards. And also, it does not flashback Mistress Bobble. So, it's just not that great. And also, due to Power Creep, this card is just not that great anymore. 2 mana for 2 on flash. You can flashback an instant or sorcery. Eh, it's just like... Eh. Uh, and nowadays, um, and back then, it was a really, really great card. It was played in all the control decks. <clears throat> Even tempo decks or aggressive blue decks was, were playing it because it was a 2-1 for 2 mana, but it just generated so much value. But now, um, also, most Death Shadow lists don't even play it. It's played sometimes in Merktide region, but very rarely. Azorus Control is like one of, just can control like a one or two of. Blue Red Control sometimes like a one of. So uh, with cards like Ledger Shredder, Murktide Regent, um, people just have a lot of better options uh, for two mana. Now, number one, the card everybody was expecting me to talk about, we have uh, our good old Goyf. Look at this price chart. Went from 200 bucks to 40 bucks for the original Future Side Tarmogoyf. But you could find Ultimate Masters Tarmogoyf for, or Time Spiraler Mastered Tarmogoyf for 15 bucks. It's <laughs> crazy to think about because when I started playing Modern, Tarmogoyf was the expensive Modern card. The card I was like, oh my god, Tarmogoyf. They have four Tarmogoyfs. It's so expensive. How could you play your Jun deck in Modern and not be stressed out about damaging your Tarmogoyfs? But now Tarmogoyf is on its way to become a bulk card. It's one generic and one green. Tarmogoyf's power is equal to the number of card types among cards in all graveyards, and its toughness is equal to that number plus one. Uh, so, the reason why this is not good because in modern right now is it's just a big fat creature, but the problem is it can get chump blocked. It dies to solitude, it dies to prismatic ending, it dies to so many cards, it dies to portable hole, it dies to so many new removal spells, and it got all classed by so many new modern creatures. Uh, especially in Modern Horizons 2, like the Elementals, that just made this card laughably bad in Modern. Uh, you can see, it's not played in that many decks. Uh, well, actually, it's played in quite a bit of decks, but it's mostly 
green black x mid-range decks for people that don't know how to adapt <laughs> to uh, the modern metagame like the rock uh, some death shadow list teamer aggro jund aggro jund like nobody plays these decks except people that were playing them when they were good but now that they're not good they're still playing them that already the, those are the only people that play tarmogoyf not a single soul that gets into the modern format says i want to build a tarmogoyf deck and it's just sad to see the downfall but just things have to evolve sometimes and tarmogoyf unfortunately I think we have to say goodbye and good riddance because I don't think we're ever going to see Tarmogoyf at the top of the metagame again, especially with all the power creep that's going on. Uh, older cards tend to just um, go away because new cards should get strictly better and have more utility. So that's it for the top five modern cards that completely fell off. Uh, I know they're still played to some extent in modern, but if those cards were so dominant at some point, uh, that means they're still good cards. So... Um, so they're still played in some decks to some extent because people have nostalgia, people remember these cards and they think they're good, but they're just not good nowadays. So, uh, and also I want to say I did not include banned cards on this list because it would just be too easy and uh, it would just kind of defeat the purpose of this video because you could say a card fell off in modern, but I could say Holgak fell off in modern, but it just got banned. So it's not Holgak's fault. Uh, anyways... So let me know what you think. Are there any cards that I missed? I know tons of other modern cards that fell off. I could have made a top 25 list. Uh, cards like Celestial Colonnade, uh, the Man Lands from uh, Zendikar uh, or World Wake really fell off. Um, which other cards fell off? I could name a, a bunch, but I would have to sit, or, sit and think about it. So let me know what you think, and uh, I will talk to you guys later.